Hey everybody, I'm Chris Lancel with The Close, and today I'm going to tell you why I think door knocking might be the single most efficient lead generation method of 2021, and I'm going to tell you how to do it. Think I'm crazy? I'm not. Let me explain. We all face some pretty incredible challenges in 2020. Even though we're not totally out of the woods yet, the events of last year have set 2021 up as one of the potentially biggest years for residential real estate ever. But there's a problem. The inventory shortage in many U.S. markets is slowing down that opportunity. There simply aren't enough houses to meet the demand of all the buyers, which has a lot of realtors scrambling for new ways to generate listings. And I'm here to tell you that door knocking a strategy that many a realtor has shunned as either too hard, too awkward, or just not productive, is going to be a standout way to get new listings in 2021. Now, why door knocking and why now? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, COVID has made many of us feel starved for human contact. We're not so much in that emergency phase any longer, and we know that with the right mask protocols, we can be safe talking to other people. We're ready to start interacting with other human beings, and so a knock at the door will have a friendlier reception right now than it may have in the past. Second, thanks to this crazy inventory crunch, homes are worth more right now than most homeowners realize, which gives you the person with a specialized knowledge about the market, the advantage. If you can get a conversation going about home values, you're much more likely than you were even, say, 24 months ago to get interested leads. So given these two conditions, here's a strategy that you can use to make door knocking work. First, you're going to find a neighborhood with a recently sold home in it. Now, preferably, you'd want that home to be one that you sold, but if not, that's okay too. All you're really looking for here is a data point that you can use to start a conversation. Now, step two is you're going to use that recently sold data to estimate the market value jump in the neighborhood as a whole since the last time that home sold. So thanks to this low inventory that we've got, the value jump or how much the home is worth now compared to when it sold before is going to be pretty significant. And this number is going to really catch the ears of anybody else in the neighborhood. Step three, you're going to take that data point, take that estimated value jump, and you're going to use your MLS and you're going to look up the dates of the last sales for the other homes in the, in the, in the neighborhood there, as well as what they sold for. And you can use your data point, your value jump, to estimate roughly what the value of the other homes in the neighborhood are. Step four, this is where the uh, rubber hits the road, the rubber on our shoes, I mean. We're gonna get out there and knock some doors. We're gonna start sharing our estimates. You're gonna get some raised eyebrows when you mention home value jumps 20, 30, 40% of what they were before. And given the market conditions in many places in the US, that is not gonna be a stretch. You're gonna find places where you have huge jumps in value. When your prospect shows some interest in your pitch, that's when you go in for the close, step five. You're going to offer to do a complete CMA. You're going to give your prospect the elevator pitch on the value of a full CMA. They might push back on you. They might say, you know what? I've been on Zillow. I did my Zestimate. And you can say, look, who would you want estimating the value of your home? A computer off in Seattle or a realtor who has worked the neighborhood, who knows the homes, who knows your local market? You're going to highlight your area expertise and your experience. You're going to pitch to them with that with that CMA, they can fully evaluate their market options in their market. And even if they're not interested in selling, which you hope that they might be, but even if they don't want to sell just yet, having this CMA gives them a path forward to maybe refinancing and lowering their mortgage payments, maybe dropping their PMI payments. Maybe it would give them some insight into the equity they could have which could lead to a home equity loan and them finishing off some of those projects they've always meant to do. Remember, when you're making your pitch, don't ask for business, ask 
to help. By offering your expertise and experience, by giving your prospects a chance to decide for themselves, you are creating relationships. Now, if you're feeling nervous about door knocking, don't worry, I get it. You're providing value to this community. You're not asking, you're offering. And if you want just a little bit of support or help getting prepped for door knocking, we got you covered. Check down in the links to the description of this video. There you're gonna find some door knocking scripts as well as overall tips for door knocking success. We've also got uh, a link there to uh, a strategy guide all about CMAs if you want some brush up on your CMA practice. In fact, we've even got a YouTube video all about doing great CMAs. So make sure you check that out too. If you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you want to stay in the loop on all the great real estate content The Close is putting out, hit that subscribe button and, you know, mash that little notification bell so we can keep you updated whenever there's new content on the channel. Really hope that this helps you out. Can't wait to see you out in the neighborhood and can't wait to hear about your door knocking success. See you next time.